I'm going to talk now about how we go about mainstreaming data into policy. Better data collected following a coherent framework can help to provide evidence-based information to answer policy questions about small-scale fisheries. Although this is relatively recent in fisheries, we have a growing body of experience from using natural capital accounting in other sectors like forests, water, waste and emissions and minerals. The wealth accounting and evaluation of ecosystem services, WAVES program, provides very useful information on resources and experiences. The website is updated regularly and it's always worth to go and visit and read it constantly. Having better quality of environmental and economic data in an integrated framework can help governments, businesses and civil society groups make decisions using publicly available, comparable and reliable data. The data can then be used to develop models that predict human behaviour, for example, responses to taxes or subsidy changes or regulations like prohibitions in marine areas in relation to environmental factors like changes in ocean currents and global warming. It can also reduce, to, uh, reduce the uncertainty linked to data collection and promotes multiple and scattered agencies to talk to each other and share the data. Obtaining this data requires active efforts at different levels. The United Nations Stats Department, for example, is leading the way, providing the structure to present the information such that it links with national reporting like the systems of national accounts. The environmental component of the account need theoretical constructions from each discipline, like hydrology, geology, ecology, forestry and fisheries. We have heard from Michael, for example, on how oceans accounts are being developed. Relevance of the information will ensure that the statistics meet the needs of the users. In fisheries, we need to ensure the segregation of the data to reflect small scale fisheries, including gender. At the moment, gaps in information that result in unreported small-scale fisheries have significant and negative impacts on the sector. For example, it is impossible to design and monitor sustainable harvest strategies without information on real catch. The lack of real numbers of people involved means that it is easy to finger point problems to the sector and regularly use it as a scapegoat when things go wrong. Often policies design around perceptions rather than evidence for example, a total reluctance to tackle fuel subsidies under the excuse that it will increase poverty when we have evidence that huge amounts of subsidies go to larger industrial players. And also, it is very hard to design and unblock realistic investments that target and benefit small scale fisheries, which often operate in informal markets. For fisheries, we see many opportunities. For example, what is the value of small-scale fisheries, the economic contribution to the national economy, including jobs and food security? What are the returns to investments from government budget allocations? In fisheries, for example, we know that it receives a lot of resources through fuel subsidies. Better data can help understand the relations to budget allocations and impacts on national performance, for example, GDP. Even better, the segregated data collected continuously will help us understand distribution across different sectors of the economy along value change. For fisheries, this means understanding impacts on artisanal and small scale fisheries near the coast, semi industrial and industrial in maritime zones, and large industrial fisheries in areas beyond national jurisdiction. Ultimately, Having better data on catch and people will enable realistic strategies to manage harvests, restore ecosystem habitats and invest in restoration of degraded habitats. Better information does not necessarily lead to better decision making, but it is a step in the, proce in the process. We all know that the political cost attached to any fiscal reform, especially in fisheries, is considerable. Better information transparently shared across multiple stakeholders can help bring much needed change towards inclusive and sustainable fisheries.